All right, let's take a few moments to talk a little about cholesterol, LDL cholesterol in, in particular. This is a topic that continues to come up, and it's relevant for people on low-carb, ketogenic, and carnivore diets. Well, really for everybody. And so we should, you know, maybe talk about some of the nuances there because a lot of people, a lot of physicians just say high cholesterol, always bad, always want to lower it, always put you on drugs. And I don't think that's the right approach, but we'll, let's talk a little bit about some of the nuance. So why do some people go on a low-carb diet and they feel great and they get better, but yet their cholesterol goes up? You know, let's talk about what we know about cholesterol and another sort of lesser known lipoprotein little a which also potentially can confer some risk and, and, and some of the some of the uh, nuance around that. So cholesterol is vital to all life. It is a molecule critical to every single membrane uh, of, our, of our body, uh, every single cell, and our hormones. Our brain is 20% pure cholesterol. Cholesterol is transported in a protein shell known as a lipoprotein. So when we talk about LDL or HDL, it is a low-density lipoprotein or a high-density lipoprotein. So that's that shell. Uh, while HDL is always thought to have been healthy, for years LDL has been said to be unhealthy. Now, now, are there some things that might cause that in question? Well, a 2019 paper published in Scientific Report looked at 12.8 million people. That's a lot of them. That's one of the biggest studies ever done. And found that total cholesterol was inversely related to all-cause mortality. That is to say that if you had very low, low cholesterol, all-cause mortality, or your chances of dying from any disease, not just heart disease, but any disease, actually went up. And that higher cholesterol up to a point was actually protective. And then very, very high levels, it was slightly less, slightly more likely to, to have increased all more, all cause mortality. But the major problem was low cholesterol. Um, and the critics of that will say, well, it's reverse causation. Sick people have lower cholesterol. And there may be some truth to that. But again, this is such a large study. You have to, you have to question, you know, the, the relationships there. Now, what if all LDL cholesterols were not the same? Uh, are there different types? Well, certainly are. We know there's a difference between particle size. So we can have big LDL cholesterols and we can have small ones. So a 2016 study in oxidative medicine and cellular longevity found that small Smaller, more densely packed LDL cholesterol particles were far more likely to cause atherosclerotic uh, disease. And small LDL particles can more easily penetrate the arterial walls. Uh, this makes them uh, a, a better suspect for plaque formation. But you know, some people say it doesn't matter. All LDL is bad. There's a study in 2015, the uh, British Medical Journal Open that reviewed 19 studies of 68,000 people, and they found, again, high LDL inversely was associated for all-cause mortality for people over 60. Higher LDL, less likely to die. Less LDL, more likely to die. LDL can be broken down into small and large particles, as we've talked about. And we know that, for instance, insulin resistance sort of pushes you towards the small particles, whereas insulin sensitivity, you have the large particles, and that seems to be protective. What can you do to reduce your small particle LDL? Well, there's a 2021 study in the Journal of American Clinical Nutrition that found that low-carbohydrate diets actually improved LDL particle size and thus reduced cardiovascular risk. A 2111 study on metabolism, clinical and experimental, found that low-carb, high-fat diets increased LDL particle size in only three days of the diet. Now, let's talk about this other particle, LP little a. Now, this is considered a reliable marker of cardiovascular in fact, there's no, there's not really any studies that show that high L LPA is not a risk factor. Whereas, you know, we've just shown you several studies where high LDL was actually inversely related with mortality. And so, LP little a seems to be pretty consistent with with, with risk. And so, there was a 20. 20 article in Current Opinions on Lipidology found that LDL and LP little a were equal risk factors for heart disease, but LP little a was more predictive of death. So it, it can be somewhat genetically determined. There are no drugs that specifically are lowering LP little a. So guess what? <laughs> it's not as popular to talk about, right? The 2020 Annals of Medicine study shows that gene therapy is on the horizon. So they can adjust your LP little a. I don't know. I don't want anybody messing with my genes. No, thank you. Uh, there was a 2023 recent paper in the American Journal of Clinical nutrition that found that replacement of saturated fats with monounsaturated fats or carbohydrates actually increased LP little a. So, so when you reduce your saturated fat, you know, stuff we're told not to eat, and re replace it with monounsaturated fat or carbohydrates, LP little a actually goes up. And the converse is true. There are other studies that show that when you increase saturated fat, your LP little a actually goes down. So going on, for instance, a Mediterranean diet would be an example of a diet that might increase actually your LP little a. And so LDL is reduced by about 7 to 11 percent when you replace saturated fat with monounsaturated fat. But LP little a actually increases 24 percent. So the question is, is that LP little a going up 24 percent more important than the LDL going down 7 percent? Interesting. We know, like I said, previously show in 1997, American Heart Association, that saturated fats actually reduce LP little a. And so it's interesting that, and, and ironic, that research shows that LP little a is one of the more reliable 
lab work markers for heart disease risk and mortality. Yet, the recommendation is still lower or eliminate saturated fatty acids. Even so, doing so increases that LP little a marker. And it's also ironic that patients are told to lower their LDL at all costs without checking if it's large or small. Not to mention if we talk about oxidized versus glycated particles, which you know is another topic for another video perhaps. So what can I say? I think the way I look at it is you should not ignore elevated uh, cholesterol, L whether it's LDL or LP little a, but there is some nuance to this. And so you need to know the nuance. And I think it's probably, you know, if you blindly just go ahead and do this, you know, let's say you're, a, you're a, a, you know, a, just an average patient. The doctor says, hey, you know, your LDL is up. Let's put you on a statin or get, put you on a low fat diet. And you do that. And they don't really monitor things. And you just, you know, you either have a heart attack or you don't, but we don't really know. Whereas let's say you decide you're going to go on a ketogenic or carnivore diet and your, and your cholesterol goes up. And so now you can say either I want to continue doing that because I feel so good and I've resolved diseases and I like my quality of life. Now you want to be you know, mindful of that and just check things like imaging, like coronary artery calcium scans or, uh, you know, CT angiography or something like that, serially, so that you have a better handle on what's going on with your heart. So anyway, that's my thought for the day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.